What's up, Fish Sauce family? It's Wilson. And Elton. And we're back with our season finale. Wow, season finale. Wow, I can't believe it. It's crazy. So I think it's it's been a wild year, and who would have thought that Fish Sauce would have even made it to the season finale? Uh, I did. I don't know about you, man. Oh, shit. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's a level of fear. You never know yeah, what's going to happen. What if nobody listened? Yeah. <laughs> what I if mean, we only got five listeners? And besides our family, that's... What if not even our family listened? Oh, my God. I, don't, I actually don't know if my mom listened yet, but she's really proud in some way. I think... What we wanted to share in the season finale is a little bit behind the scenes look of how it all got started, how it began. And we'd love to answer some of the questions that our Fish Sauce family sent in and actually kind of go through what we felt and emotionally went through yeah. in, this, in this journey. Is there a season two, Wilson? Uh, there's absolutely a season two. Look right. out for season two in your iTunes. Awesome. And if you noticed, if our voices sound better in the season finale than any other episode that we've recorded in the past, it's because our editor, Christian Edwards, he highly, highly encouraged us to get these awesome new mics to make us sound even more professional. So we're getting more legitimate. Yeah, we leveled up. Wilson, so how did this all begin? Yeah, and this goes all the way back a year ago when you just moved to San Francisco. This Can't is believe your, it. It was your housewarming party mm -hmm. and we're all having a good time we're drinking japanese whiskey yamazaki and thanks for everyone who came by the way yeah i, I mean it was a good crowd yeah it was good and we were talking about you know some of the ideas of like moving to san francisco you know pursuing some of the current roles that we have but we we're trying to figure out you know how do we share this fish sauce mission of sharing these unique stories of asian american founders and entrepreneurs and you know who's taken that leap of faith from like a traditional path into this riskier but less certain path right like that mission how do we share that and how do we scale that mm -hmm. how do we know then was the right time to start something given that i just moved right we're kind of fully integrated into our jobs yeah that's a great question I think we have the balls. I, I don't know where it's coming from, but part of it comes from the fact that our parents are people who, you know, created something from nothing when moving to, to the U.S. and they're immigrants. And I'm really proud of what they've done. But to be honest, to date, have we created anything from scratch, zero to one? Have we done that? That's a question I think we subconsciously ask ourselves. So I think this need to, like, know how to create something from, from nothing and, and really take our friendship to the next level too. And if we wanted to work on businesses in the future, the best way to test it is just to do it, right? And, and Robbie Kwok said that too, right? <laughs> and, and the way to do this is, um, you know, in a form of a passion project, even though we didn't think of this as a business idea to start with, little did we know that a passion project actually feels like something that, you know, you have to think of the same way as you build a business, work with your, your friends or business partners with the same, you know, type of mindset. And a lot of the challenges are, not that different. There's a level of respect that you have to give to each person that's different in a business relationship. And there is a level of commitment to each individual who is devoting their time on the team. Yeah, I think the best way to describe that interaction is talking about how we schedule our meetings and when do we actually meet, right? Like, think about it. We are in three different time zones. You're in Pacific time zone. I'm in the East Coast and Christian's in New Orleans in the central time zone, you call it. Yeah, <laughs> central time zone. It's crazy. It's crazy to have a truly remote team. That's practice in itself. And then we started it, right? We had the balls. We wanted to create something. And we were called Tech Ninjas. Oh, my God. <laughs> Remember that? I didn't think you'd bring that up. Oh, my God. That's really embarrassing. We had a logo for Tech Ninjas. So... I'm embarrassed. So embarrassed about it. that. I don't really talk about it. We just say, oh, you know, we pivoted our logo and name into uh, Fish Sauce. <laughs> but that was, I still remember that the time we were thinking about all these different names. And, and that one was like, it felt like money. But I, I think when you really test certain either ideas or names is when you try to explain that idea to other people and try to evangelize it. And when it doesn't stick... That's when you know. Yeah. I think there was a month time where Wilson and I would go to our, our different friend groups and try to test the name Tech Ninjas. And people would give us different stares or like try to convince us otherwise. And we were so narrow minded that we were like, oh, no, that is the name. That was the name. And it wasn't until Tahoe. We, we were like throwing names back and forth. Uh, we we're just walking around and we we're just thinking like, you know, what's a good name? And fish sauce kind of came up casually. And and um, we certainly weren't sure. I mean, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think anyone... On a, you know, stops on a dime and said, fish sauce, that's the perfect name, you yeah. know? But it kind of seeded our mind. Yeah. And I think it was 
A lot of the seeding came from our epic Southeast Asia trip. We went to Vietnam and we went to Thailand and really discovered the origins of fish sauce. And I think that really stuck with us. But then the other thing is it felt like who we were. Like we were able to be the brand of fish sauce as well. When did we decide after seeding that in our mind, this idea of fish sauce, this name of fish sauce, when did we actually, you know, close it? We were talking about it. What do we usually do on Saturdays and Sunday mornings? Yeah, we did that today, earlier today, right? <laughs> so we went to the gym in the morning after we like worked out, got some sweats on. We went to this place in the Tenderloin called Golden Lotus. Check it out. Yeah, definitely <laughs> check it out. It's an awesome place. Try to not make it too packed. We we like the the no lines uh, now, <laughs> and we were eating like all the favorite Vietnamese food, and everything had fish sauce in it. Yeah. And then we were like, "Damn, this food is good!" Like, oh man, we we literally order so many things on the menu. Like, whenever all our other friends come and join us, like um, the entire menu is like pretty much ordered, and we always ask for more fish sauce. Oh, we definitely did today. And then we were like. That's the name. Yeah. Like this that has to makes be the name. The food so freaking good. Yeah. Another question: How do we choose podcasts as a medium? There's all these different ways of doing it: a blog, email newsletter, YouTube, podcast. Like, how do we decide podcast would be the right medium for what we're doing here? I think it was pretty serendipitous. During that housewarming, we we're taking shots, maybe over drinking, and then just being overly creative and visionaries. And <laughs> at that time, I think both Wilson and I were individually listening to a lot of podcasts. 20 Minute VC, This Week in Startups. How I Built This. How I Built This is a great one as well. And we really wanted to have a platform that was able to show our personalities and our energy and really be fish sauce, right? And I think having a platform like a podcast in our opinions, was the perfect outlet to do so. Podcasts also were growing rapidly. Yeah. Right. What is the stat? You know the stat. I looked it up um, just now just to sound smarter on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say about one in five, you know, one in four actually listen to podcasts in the U.S. over ages 12 and above. And it's growing year on year 20%, which is really fast growth. That's crazy. And specifically from an ad revenue perspective, if you guys are curious, certain video ads and, and, and photo ads, display ads are like, you know, $3 sort of per thousand impressions. But for podcasts, it's something like $25. It really says how influential podcasts are for people because they're using this platform to be educated. They want to learn about what's out there. They want to learn how to self-help. They want to figure out, you know, how to improve on their lives or, or take the next step from a career perspective or just know more about the world. Sounds like the beginning of a rocket ship. <laughs> so I get asked a lot of questions. What happens behind the scenes? Like, how do you guys do it? What is the process like in terms of starting a podcast? My answer is uh, Christian Edwards. That's how we do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The two of us definitely can't edit a single <laughs> podcast. <laughs> oh, man. So... I mean, the way the way we get started, I would say for season one, a lot of it when we first started was very much for fun. We were tapping into our personal networks, people that we already know, and we're just curious about their story. And we have the benefit of knowing them, but we want other people to hear about their amazing stories too. Wilson's being very humble because there was definitely a lot of hustle involved. Like, remember in Goku's episode, he mentioned that Wilson actually like stopped him in the middle of the hallway and asked him <laughs> to be on Fish Sauce. So it wasn't as easy as it sound. We definitely reached out to people as well as utilized our, our networks, but a lot of heart, passion, and hustle involved as well. And it shows that like when you care about something, you can get things done. And so thankful for our friends and those around us who were able to introduce us to our other guest speakers as well, such as Dan and the Boba guys and Lisa Fetterman, mm. all the above. Like we, We've been really fortunate to just get the all-star A-list lineup of Asian American founders, entrepreneurs, operators, and VCs for this first season. It's, it's incredible. I, I think I surprised myself. Good point. Part of it was understanding that it's almost a little bit validating like who we are as people, that people actually trust us when we have zero product mm -hmm. out there. We don't have one podcast out there and we're going out trying to shop around and ask people, hey, pitch, you know, pitch, like, hey, do you want to be part of this podcast where we have no product at all? Yeah. And, and our mission at that point in time wasn't even well thought out, right? We were literally saying, hey, do you want to be a podcast about Asian Americans and we're going to talk about cool people like you? The dynamic is different from person to person. You don't know what they're going to do. Like, yeah. you don't know what their tone, what kind of stories, uh, stories they'll share. And, and I love the fact that, like, everyone is a little bit different. So humble and so nice as well. And how long did those conversations last, actually? Yeah. Like, was it only 15 minutes, like our episodes are? Yeah, I almost want to survey our audience to say, like, what their guess is, right? What do you yeah. think the listeners think it is? 
I mean, people are busy, so I think people may think it's 30 minutes, right, in and out, and then we edit it to 15, so we cut out half of it. Yeah, but wrong. That's absolutely wrong. You know, a lot of times they're at least one hour long, sometimes two hours long. And part of it is because, quite honestly, I think we just all love to talk. But for good reason. We, we invited them because we have they have such great stories. And, you know, this two hours long and we're trying to learn how to, to cut it down. And because we know that everyone has such short attention span. And I don't think we deserve your time until we prove it. And, and so if it takes one hour to almost two hours to create, like, just the content, how long does the entire process take? We have busy schedules. Everyone out there has busy schedules. So if they really want to create something like fish sauce or create their own thing, how can we be the most helpful in terms of just being realistic in the time commitment of starting something on their own? For us, it feels fish sauce is our baby. It yeah. feels like we have a piece of fish sauce inherent in us now, right? Yeah, we'll we walk do what around. It takes. Like, yeah. like you are fish sauce in many ways. We are fish sauce. Yeah. Like we're walking around like thinking like we wear the brand proud. Yeah, like wearing the t-shirts, repping the the stickers on our laptops, on our phones, giving it away, making sure our friends wear it. We feel proud and we feel thankful and we feel grateful for, for that level of support. And even the fact that people want to continue to listen and that our audience and our Fish Sauce families continue to be engaged. But what is that time commitment? Yeah, so we, we did mention... The fact that the episode takes about, call it, you know, two hours, three hours, just like go end to end to record. But before that, we didn't mention there's a lot of research and email and networking back and forth, right? So that's another maybe hour or two there. Yeah, remember those late nights at Polk and we had an interview the next morning and the questions weren't done yet? <laughs> I think we were half asleep and on, on Google Docs, like just typing gibberish. <laughs> but yeah, I do remember those nights. And, and the one thing that people don't know, actually, is the cadence at which we record the podcast and yes, we do release it every two weeks, but uh, behind the scenes, what really happens is that months before I went to business school, we said, hey, let's actually get together in San Francisco, make the best use of time in the summer and record a bunch of recordings and podcasts with the speakers. And um, we went back to back sometimes. I mean, initially, the idea was, oh, if Wilson was in San Francisco, then we could actually take our time and record episodes as they come and we could release them live. And then we realized Wilson is moving and there was a time limit on it. So we had to get all the content together because we didn't want to miss out on the opportunity to interview people in person. We get that so much more meat and content and passion out of in-person interviews. So we had a time limit. We literally had a month, maybe a month and a half yeah. to record 10 episodes. And I think the time limit was helpful. It made us, made us hustle even more and say, hey, let's get shit done. Mm -hmm. And I think it was a blessing in disguise. And then Christian came on board and started doing his magic and making everything just work out. And we developed a timeline for a release schedule. And that was season one of Fish Sauce. What was the process of editing each episode and going back and forth? I mean, that took a long time too, right? So as we started the cadence of meeting on a weekly basis and getting episodes out on a bi-weekly basis, we had to make sure that in between those weeks, we were able to produce and provide feedback and give Christian enough time to be able to edit those episodes. And that took like an hour or two or even three sometimes yeah. as well because we had to listen to it. We had to write feedback. We had to change it. We had to listen to it again and then provide it out. It was an awesome experience learning and understanding the details and really making sure that the story is told to the best of its possibility is important. And we wanted to be able to produce the best product so all our listeners will come back for a season two. We forget sometimes that the listener is not in the room with us. So we want to make sure that we're thinking about the podcast and the episode as if they weren't here and finding, you know, the best way to tie the whole story together. And that takes time. There's also a social media component added to it, right? Because we had to promote each episode. We had to promote the podcast. People have to know about the brand. The brand has to grow. But how do we grow that brand? Me and you in different cities can only do so much. How do we get that hockey stick growth, as people want to call it? <laughs> And how do we show those vanity metrics? <laughs> There's no perfect answer to it, but the way we thought about it is social media is very important to what we, to how we get the word out. And with any passion project, it starts with being excited about it and just whenever you think of something interesting, just posting it. But sometimes organic is not consistent, right? And we see that and we want to make sure that we have those excitements and capture those excitements on, a, on one place so we can release those type of social media posts. And we do that on a Google Doc. So on our spreadsheet, we actually plan out, hey, these are the things that we get really excited about, whether it's about the speaker, or about the company, and we put it on a schedule. So we, we think of it as like a, like a relay race. It's a baton. Yeah. So Elton, 
leads it by creating all the content and saying, hey, these are the things that we should think about and, and really, you know, awesome photos, awesome articles and things that we want to talk about. And then um, he hands a baton to me where I think about, okay, what's the story you want to tell with this? How do we um, share it in a way that's impactful or is helpful for our listeners? You know, hopefully, you know, they, they vibe with the listeners so far. Mm -hmm. So all these different aspects combined is essentially behind the scenes of a fish sauce. And throughout the process, we learn a lot, learn a lot about ourselves, learn about how we can stay committed to our teammates. And we get the feedback from all of you, our, our listeners, and we try to apply them to each episode that we have coming, coming up. And we get a lot of great feedback and a lot of things that we could work on. We're not perfect and keep them coming because they actually help us a lot and they help us improve. So we really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and we're serious about that feedback process. If those who use Slack, we have a certain channel mm -hmm. that we call appreciation. Yeah. And the reason why we have that is we get a lot of you know love from the listeners, whether the mission really vibes with them, certain episodes that they really, um, really resonated and takeaways that they really liked. So we put that on our appreciation page um, to not forget why we're doing this. Wilson, can I read one of the appreciations we got this week? I, sure. I want to share with yeah, let's do it. our audience and our friends. We've been getting so much love and support on our iTunes. And if you haven't rated us yet, please do. But there's one that literally is awesome. So it comes from Fish Sauce for My Foe. Awesome name. So Good job. love you, whoever you are. And the title is Fish Sauce is Fire. Fish Sauce is Fire. Yo, we absolutely need more podcasts like this one. The stories and experiences of Asian Americans have always been on low volume. It's time to wake up and tell our stories. We can be the main characters too. The podcast does an excellent job of exploring young Asian American professionals in their journeys towards innovation and success. I love that this podcast targets that unique place for entrepreneurship and race. I dig it so hard. 100%. <laughs> Keep it up, guys. Thanks for all those positive feedback and positive appreciations. We love them I and mean, keep them coming. And I think some, some of our audience wants to hear what did we learn as, as hosts throughout the process? And I guess one thing we could start off with is what was most surprising? What was the most challenging thing that you did not expect to happen? So when we're starting a passion project, the most surprising piece was the balance between personal and work. And in this case, was this passion work project, right? And I didn't realize that this balance was so important because our relationship starts from a friendship perspective. And when we call each other, when we catch up, we catch up about our personal lives. How are you doing at work? How's your health? Are you sleeping much? Are you eating much? Like the, the, the general gist of how you're doing your well-being. Thanks and, for caring. <laughs> you never asked me that, though. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, but that's where this relationship starts from. But when you start a passion project, we are very laser-focused people, and we think, okay, what's the most important thing we need to work on now? And in this case, it's fish sauce, right? And we tend to talk about what we need to do, growth metrics, how do we get more listeners, what are the you know next few things we need to do in terms of like speaker and editing. But sometimes we forget about asking about each other mm -hmm. and how are you doing? So I think that balance has been the most challenging piece for fish sauce. Yeah, definitely. I, I feel that was definitely one of the most surprising things for me as well. Finding that perfect line and divide between a business relationship, a friendship that started a long time ago, and then figuring out how everything fits in with your work and then your outside personal life as well. We individually in our personal lives and work and school lives had busy schedules and we needed to make sure that we were able to structure enough time for each of these different aspects. We've been calling it a business, but when we first started, I didn't know that it would be a business or true. Right? Oh, like yeah. a passion project is something that's coming out of just, you know, pure organic interest and passion, right? Mm -hmm. And I think the other piece that was pretty surprising was we were building fish sauce like a business yeah. in many ways. And whether it's and did we ever talk not. about it like that? Yeah, I, I I don't know. I think throughout the whole process, we do dream a lot. So we talk about how this can be, you know, you know, something that we care about, but still grow a brand and have like certain, you know, adventure arm of it, a whiskey lounge, like that's part of it. So we dream a lot. But did we ever think of this as, you know, a business from the get go? Probably not because we were just passionate about the topic. Yeah, we wanted to try something new. And yet it moved fast like any startup. What was one of the best moments um, throughout the journey for season one? 
I mean, I think back to the interaction with the Boba guys. Like, I, I just love those interactions that we have with them. They started out just as a speaker, a guest for the podcast, right? Mm-hmm. But what it turned out to be was a relationship, a friendship over time. And it started right after the conversation. Them asking us, hey, you want to come out for lunch with us? I got a good spot. They took us out. And afterwards, they're telling us, hey, you should really come out to play tennis or golf or whatever it is. Um, you know, come out with us and let us know when you're in any of the locations. We'll give you a discount. I'm like, what the heck is happening? Yeah. Do you still remember the time that when we moved to San Francisco, what we thought of the Boba guys? Yeah, dude, we like we really looked up to the Boba guys. We looked up to your relationship that you guys had together professionally and the ability to build this amazing brand that was able to inspire all different types of people. We we wanted to be the Boba guys. <laughs> and I remember sitting there on a the couch looking at their website and seeing like them in their lab coats like, wow, these guys are great. We would love to, you know, be part of this, grow something like this. I mean, I think one of my best moments was when we went down to L.A. to record a couple more episodes and we decided to do a last minute launch party of fish sauce and we just got our t-shirts it was around the winter time where all our family was back and we just wanted to host people we wanted to build community we wanted to really share the love of fish sauce um, around and we invited everyone over to we work and we we were so surprised when people actually followed our facebook page and came without us having to personally invite them and That was such a touching and eye-opening moment where it showed that this is actually something. And then the last part of the question is, what did we learn or take away from any of the speakers that we chatted with? So the one that comes to me immediately is Curtis Lee from Lux. So some quick background. Curtis is a more introverted, quieter type of CEO. He's very thoughtful in what he says and thinks about. So he talks about how when he enters... Um, when he's raising funds, enters like a room full of venture capitalists, and he shares his mission and vision and his team and in his own tone. But a lot of the VCs, they tell him, hey, you really got to come in and be loud, be a maniac, you know, jump on the whiteboard, start showing your whole crazy vision. And honestly, Curtis was saying, you know, that's not me. And he tried doing that a couple of times and it just doesn't work. And that story really resonated with me. Because um, at the end of the day, people want to work with people they trust, Mm -hmm. right? And if you are not who you are when you're in a meeting and you're not being authentic, it comes out very easily because you can't fake that for so long. So I think that was one of the biggest takeaways. Just be yourself in in certain meeting rooms, even if it's high-pressure environment, because at the end of the day, you have to be yourself and just gain the trust. And despite all the, what the right standard of CEO should be and what, you know, Silicon Valley should be, uh, if you're, you're, if you're being yourself, I think that comes out more convincing. For me, I, I really took to heart when Robbie talked about the power of organic networking and how relationships and the strength of relationships really matter. So it's not really about going to a networking event and trying to meet people there. It's more so about the quality of work and quality relationship and working relationship you have with others when you're in the same environment and working on the same mission or goal or project. And that could be in your workplace, that could be in your friend group, et cetera. And those are the people who are really going to help you get to the next step, right? I mean, really going to recommend and refer you to that next job and get you to um, what you want to do next. We have a couple of, we have so many questions. I don't know which one to choose from. Yeah, let's just pick two. Oh, this is a good one. What is your dream slate of guests? There's a few in our mind, right? Mm-hmm. And right before coming into here, um, doing this, this season finale, we're talking about Eric Wu. CEO of Open Door. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would love to interview Eric Wu. If anyone's listening, please intro us. Yeah, then please do. I mean, it's, it's an awesome home buying, selling platform. And what he's done is, is, you know, he's grown this company very quickly, convinced, you know, a lot of people give him a lot of money to take big risk. And it's, it's an intersection between real estate and marketplaces and technology. And that's something that we're really fascinated by, something really tangible that we can understand, our parents can understand. 
I think the second one that comes to me is David Chang from Momofuku. We love food. We would eventually love to create a restaurant, and David has really done that to its finest. And David, if you're listening or if anyone knows David, we'd love to have a chance and opportunity to interview you and, and learn and hear your story and how you built this hospitality restaurant empire. And let us know if we can you know, beta test some of your new concepts. Oh, love yeah. To join. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Okay, this one is from Andrew Chow from the Boba Guys. Andrew. So he asked, what is one question you were afraid to ask a founder slash leader this season but did not ask? Mm, yeah, I think the one that comes to mind for me is, did you ever think that being Asian American was a reason why you weren't able to succeed as much as you could have? So that's a wrap on Season 1. Stay tuned for our special guests we have in store in Season 2. In the meantime, if you like what you heard, please share the podcast with your friends and family and leave us a review on iTunes. Also, like us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and follow us on Twitter at Fish Sauce Pod. We appreciate all the support and can't wait to share more stories of successful Asian Americans when we return. Thanks again for joining us on a journey to explore the minds of successful Asian American founders, operators, and investors. As we discovered their secret sauce, we hope you found yours too. What's, what's your, your secret, secret sauce? sauce? So what's your secret sauce? Oh man, back to the main question. What's, what's our secret sauce? That's a better question. What is our secret sauce? For some reason, people are just really enjoy talking to us or maybe we're just annoying or whatever the reason is. People... For some reason, we captivate this energy and they are coming to us. And and that type of environment, I don't think is by accident because we've seen this happen in the past. For some reason, people are really drawn to this energy that we have. Or amused. Or amused. Or, or are we just a form of entertainment? I don't know what it is, but there's something there. People are just loud. That could be it. What's the secret sauce? I'm going to say well, two words. Fish sauce. <laughs> Smelly, quirky, but critical too absolutely it's the energy it's the passion and it's the friendship it's a friendship it's it's the ambition but without with the goofiness and humility yeah on three fish sauce three two one fish Fish sauce. sauce